All right, ChatGPT, why don't you ask me another real estate question? Matthias, when it comes to marketing a property, what strategies have you found to be most effective in attracting potential buyers? Oh, ChatGPT, this is such a generic question. And it's really like, it's not fair to just go. There are many strategies. Uh, obviously, uh, you have to adapt to the type of property you're selling. There is not like one marketing that it goes specific for one property. Everything is a little bit different. Every property is a little bit different. Nowadays, uh, print advertising is phasing out a little bit, even though we still do it. Uh, there's a lot of online advertising, but the most important thing, obviously, it's the pre-market. The marketing, it's the pre-marketing. You know, it's the photography you do, it's the way you present the home, it's the way you write the descriptions, um, the potentials. You have to see, sometimes you have to sell what a property could be. You know, I know that's kind of like a gray area because you wanna, you really, your intention is to sell what is. You don't want somebody to buy something that is not. But you wanna kind of, um, open the door to the possibilities, be open to that. And when you, you could do that in the marketing. Now, there's a lot of little things that you could do in the marketing. One of the things that you wanna do is tracking the metrics so you know exactly how the public is responding to the marketing. Uh, and that is very important. Social media ads are important. People will find you, people will find properties that way. Obviously, we all market the property. We syndicate to all the major platforms. The marketing process is complex. There is not an answer that fits all. You have to do it professionally. You owe it to the seller to make it the property look in the best possible light, whether it's a $10 million mansion or a $500,000 fixer that's falling apart. You give it justice. The approaches are different. You're not gonna do the same thing, but it's worth doing it because it highlights the property and it gives you an opportunity um, to eventually, you know, sell it for the most money, which is which is obviously what you want to do. All right, ChatGPT, why don't you ask me another real estate question? Matthias, when it comes to pricing a property, how do you determine the right listing price to attract buyers while still ensuring a favorable outcome for your clients? All right, that's a good question. I've talked about this before. Here's what I'm going to say. I say it again. It's like a broken record, but you know what? It's totally worth it. The listing price, the list price of your property is not its market value. It's not what I or you think the property is worth. It's not what your neighbor thinks the property is worth. It's a marketing strategy. It's a way to get as many eyes as possible and as many people as possible through that door. That's what a list price is. How do I arrive at it? It's relatively simple. You look at comparable sales that are relatively recent start 30 days then maybe go to 60. the closer the most similar otherwise you have to do adjustments also look at the competition what's on the market if people you know you have to think if they look at this property they're looking at other properties are they gonna is my property gonna be like they're gonna think like it's overpriced they're gonna think this they're gonna think that so even if you have something new unique what you gotta do is look at the data and then decide a price accordingly. Make sure you could get as many people through the door as you can. So that's the, sh the long and the short of it. There's many other nuances that go into it, but this is one way, this is a good way to start. All right, ChatGPT, why don't you ask me a real estate question? Matthias, when it comes to handling multiple offers on a property, what approach do you typically take to ensure your clients receive the best possible terms and conditions? Very good question. Okay, so what do we do with multiple offers? Multiple offers, we want to make sure we level the playing field. So we look at all the offers and we are careful in understanding the terms and the price. It's very easy to jump to conclusion. I'm gonna give, give you an example. Sometimes you receive an offer that it's the highest offer, but maybe there's terms that are not favorable for the client. Not just that, but there could be like, now some agents, when when rates started going up, some agents started putting rate buy down into the offer, like automatically. Uh, the seller will pay $16,000 to buy the buyer's rates down, et cetera, et cetera. You gotta spot those little things. And let me tell you something. I just wrote an offer like, I don't know, like three or four months ago. No, maybe less than that. And my client specifically wanted the furniture in the house. You know, we wrote the furniture, the furniture to stay. And Guess what? The agent did not see it. So she accepted the offer without looking at that. And then she was like, oh my God. Uh. Anyway, 
We resolved it and everybody was happy in the end, but you gotta look at those details, look at the offer. So spreadsheet, write down all the terms, da, 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 and then send out counter offers as needed. And that's what I mean by leveling the playing field. Like, you know, if try to match the terms that all the, all the offers have, what the best terms are. And if people have things that your seller doesn't like and your seller cannot live with, make sure you point them out and you sort of like handle it that way. One of the important things that you wanna do as a listing agent um, is you want to make sure that you keep it as fair as possible for everybody, right? That's one of the things you wanna do. And a lot of people will call you and try to get information and try to do this. Now, I'm not saying you're not supposed to be helpful because you are supposed to be helpful, but also make sure to let everybody have the same opportunity. You know, the real estate market in Los Angeles, it's huge, but it's really small. We kind of all know each other. The people that, you know, that, that are in certain markets, you know, the names that pop up are always there. So as an agent, you want to be cordial to other agents and you want to give them an opportunity to put their best foot forward and present their best offer. And that's kind of really what you should do when you're dealing with multiple offers. Okay, ChatGPT, let's do one more, one last one. Why don't you ask me your last real estate question? Matthias, in your experience, what are some effective strategies for helping clients navigate the closing process smoothly and efficiently? Great question. Okay, communication, communication, communication. It's pretty simple, the closing process. Okay, so once we open escrow, you gotta let the client know, right? You're waiting for the deposit, et cetera, et cetera. Let the seller know. Same thing for the buyer. Make sure the buyer receives their wiring information throughout the process. Here's one thing that you have to keep in mind. We do this all the time, right? Some people do not maybe sell their home, like sell real estate once or twice in their lifetime. So do not assume that people know everything there is to know. So guide them, help them understand the forms, help them understand the process. So one of the things that you want to do is put together a checklist, which may or may not apply to all the escrows, but have everything in a master, in a master list and kind of keep the, the seller appraised of what's going on. For instance, when you receive an offer, if it's contingent, you want to let the seller know, okay, the close of escrow is going to be this day. They have 10 days to do the inspection. They have 17 days to get a loan and an appraisal. And these are the dates when these things are up. And when the negotiation happens, this can be extended, et cetera, et cetera. In, a, in all real estate contracts, time is of the essence. So make sure you behave professionally as an agent and make sure that the seller or the buyer are aware of the expectations that are out there. Now, this becomes even more important when it comes to negotiating repairs. Now, we talked about this extensively in another video, but it's important to let people know what they should expect. Don't let a seller, you know, feel like, oh, nobody's gonna, you know, this is perfect. They're gonna inspect your house. It's amazing. They're not gonna ask for repair, for, for any credits or anything. Why? We know how real estate works. We know how it works. People inspect. That's why they pay the money for an inspector so they can find all the little minutia and then they can bring you know, of what the things that are reasonable, they can ask for a credit, they can ask for repairs, they can ask for a price reduction, they can ask for everything. What we want is to make sure that everybody knows, because here's what I've learned over the years. Um, bad news is much easier to deal with when it doesn't come as a surprise. Bad surprises make people upset, but bad news, which you don't say that, you understand the language, you said, okay, we have a challenge to overcome. Those are much more easier to deal with when it comes to expectations. So navigating the closing process, you make sure everybody's on the same page. You make sure all documents are signed. And also you make sure that when the time comes to actually close and transfer ownership, everything is available. Where are the keys? Where is this garage opener? Where is this? Where is that? Where is it? Do you have the code? Are you taking the ring? Is the ring, is the, is the video doorbell staying? Okay, we gotta disconnect it from your account. We have to, okay. All these little things, too many to list, but you should be well organized. That's why one of the things that an agent should have, it's extremely good organization and the ability to ask for help when they need it. And I think that's important. Thank you everybody for joining me on this video. My name is Matthias Baker Mizuchi and I'm your trusted Los Angeles realtor. If you enjoy this content, please like, subscribe and help me spread the word. If I don't hear from you sooner, I will see you on the next video. And until next time, Live boldly and explore in Los Angeles. Thank you.